Good morning, everyone. How are you doing? Welcome to our live broadcast. Uh, welcome to Kingdom Nation Ministries uh, Sunday service live stream. I'm also waiting for everyone to to join us. Um, keep being encouraged to just uh, put a, a comment if you can hear me clearly and if you can see me clearly. I was so excited to be sharing with you the word of God today. Thank you for joining us. I see the congratulations are online. Welcome guys, welcome guys. Welcome, welcome. Also waiting for others to join us. <clears throat> Let's get into a brief prayer meditation. As Pastor is sharing the links with, with other people so they can join us. How's it going? If you can hear me, just you know, just put a thumbs up. Oh, pitch and sound is clear. Okay, thank you, <laughs> thank you, thank you. Okay, we're also just waiting for the people to join us. Uh, you know, let's just get into a meditation. Uh, I don't know if you can hear. There's a song that was just playing in the background. It's called "Holy Spirit Come" uh, by New Wine. Group called New Wine. Holy Spirit Come, Come. Amen. We're also waiting for everyone to, to join, some for other people to join us. I'm just going to talk a little bit uh, from the book, Kingdom Prophets, the new book that I published. Yesterday I was on the phone with, uh, with the man of God. And we we're talking about how, you know, the prophetic is important in our generation. You know, and you know, whilst I'm waiting for other people to join us in the next maybe 10 15 minutes, I just want to talk briefly about the Booking the Prophets. If you don't have your copy, please make sure you get a copy, okay? Please make sure you order your copy, get it online, uh, get it on Amazon. <clears throat> We've shared the links uh, on the other video. We'll try to put a message also out with the new links for Amazon, with the new link for, uh, for the Kindle version, the hard copy, or even our, our office, our church office. Uh, you can contact our church office to to send you a copy. Uh, Pastor Ru will be able to help with that. Is that right, Pastor Ru? Yeah. So, um, other than that, I just want to share a little bit about the about the book. We're also waiting for others. So, in the book, I share you know some some important keys about why it's important to be prophetic. And now, more than ever, you need to be your own prophet. One of the things that I try to to answer in this book. I was joking with another certain man of God. And I was talking about uh, there's a certain cartoon called Ratatouille. And the premise that they put across in that cartoon is, you know, it's about chefs. Uh, it's about chefs. And, in the, and the principle that they try to put across is that can everyone cook? Can anyone cook? You know, and then a certain chef wrote a certain book, you know, to try to teach people about how to cook and how to cook. And, you know, in the spiritual realm, that's what I was trying to answer also with this book. That, you know what, can everyone cook? prophesy can anyone prophesy and that's one of the, the biggest mysteries not just of the new testament church but of our generation because we're living in a very prophetic generation and we need we all need to be prophetic and the question that we might be asking ourselves that i answer in this book is that can anyone prophesy can you prophesy can you prophesy and i was on the phone yesterday with uh with a certain pastor and we were talking with, with and then we were talking back and forth for over 30 minutes or close to an hour. And he was talking about, he went through the book and was giving me feedback. And was saying, you know what, this is an amazing material. Giving me highlights, telling me things that maybe I should have considered changing. <laughs> you know, his recommendations. But in, in all, he just said, you know what, it's a, it's a book that is important. One of the things that we did in this book is that we tried to make it, it's an easy read. It's not one of those books that, you know, you, you, you will struggle to read. It's an easy read. You try to read it, it's, it should be an easy read. The chapters. I, I try to be as brief as possible, try to be as straight to the point as possible. Uh, it's not that long. It's only about 150 pages. 
Um, but I try to, to simplify the mystery behind the prophetic. You know, whilst we're waiting for other people to join us for the next maybe five minutes, I'm just talking to those who just joined us. I'm just talking briefly about the book Kingdom Prophets. Uh, I did a, pod, I did a short video, promo video clip, and I was talking about chapter 10. I was talking from chapter 10 about the process of prophesying. Uh, but today I want to talk about, you know, the keys to, to the prophetic. I'm not, that's not today's message. This is just us, you know, just chatting, you know, just share, share the link with your loved ones, like, comment, you know, copy, paste, share, share the link so that we can get other more people to join us, you know, for our Sunday service. We're so excited to be, to be having you today. Such a blessed day. It is an honor for me to be sharing with you the word of God. I'm so excited about the word that the Lord gave me. I'm, I'm so, so, so excited. I'm sure it's going to be a blessing to you. Uh, but right now, we're also waiting for other people to join us. We're talking a little bit, sharing from the Book Kingdom Prophets. And I was talking about keys, prophetic keys. Uh, last uh, During the course of the week, I shared from chapter 10 about the process of the prophetic that, you know, when you're prophesying on someone, number one, you need to be able to interpret their countenance, that is their current status, their current situation, that you need to be able to penetrate to see their past, where they're coming from, and then God will then give you the keys to see their future. Hi, Rutenda, how are you doing? How are you doing? I hope we're going to contact you after this message. I want to talk to you. <laughs> I have a word for you. Amen. <laughs> good morning. Good morning. Uh, so, you know, there are three keys. I was talking to Pastor Ru about those keys late last night. We were talking about the keys that give you the, the right. You know, there's spiritual confidentiality. There's spiritual confidentiality. God honors that confidentiality. God will not just show your business to everyone. That's why not everyone can prophesy. Uh, but, you know, if you, you prove yourself to be someone who's, number one, who's understanding. Understanding, that's number one. Then number two, you need to be a person who's willing to be helpful. Who's willing to be helpful. You know, then number three, you need to be a person with love. When you have understanding, love, and you are helpful, when you intercede and when you pray for people, God will begin to reveal to you secrets about what that, what's happening in their life, what's happening in their personal space. Because God understands that you're not going to use that information against them. Those are some of the three keys to the prophetic. That if you are going to prophesy in that you will, after you get your copy of Kingdom Prophets, we share the grace in it. There's a prayer, a special prayer that I make in the book. You know, uh, this is the diagram in chapter 10, you know, of a person with, with three waves. I don't know if they're clear. Uh, but if, when you have your copy, these things will make sense. And then I talk about the three hindrances. The three keys to then to pro be able to prophesy is, number one, you need to have love. Number two, you need to be understanding. And number three, you need to be a person who's helpful. But also the, the opposite is true that, you know, the three things, the three hindrances to the prophetic is that, number one, if you're a person who doesn't, who's, who doesn't operate in love, you know, and if you're a person who doesn't, uh, who's not understanding, who's judgmental, and if you're a critical individual, God will be hesitant to give you secrets and, mystery and, and, and prophecies about people because you're not going to take them with a positive heart. You're not going to take them with, with understanding. You're, not, you're, going to, you're going to use that. You might even use that information against those people. So therefore, God will not reveal those secrets and those prophecies about certain individuals because of how you, what you would do with the information. Number three, you need, if you're a person who's unhelpful, just indifferent, you know, irrespective of what you know, you just don't care. It's very difficult for you to get the prophetic, you know. So those are some of the keys I was sharing with Pastor Ru. We were talking and deliberating about the book Kingdom Prophets after I had a certain conversation with the pastor and, you know, a certain pastor and then we were talking about the book and he was sharing with me the things that he found powerful from the book. And once again, if you don't have a copy, order your copy, get it in, contact our office uh, or send a message even on the social media platform and say, hey, I want my copy, send it to me. We are able to send you either an e-copy, hard copy, uh, whatever you prefer the quickest. Uh, we're just doing this while we're also waiting for other people to join us. And then in the next five minutes at, at 9.45, we're going to start our service. The title of today's message is The Audacity of Faith. Uh, the Audacity of Faith. That, that's the title of today's message that we're going to be sharing. Uh, but we're just going to go for the next five minutes. Just talking briefly about the book, you know, Kingdom Prophets. Kingdom Prophets. One of the things that I was sharing with the pastor yesterday is that, you know, the things that you see in this material, they're not... You cannot, it's not wisdom from Farai. It's not Farai's wisdom. It's not Farai's knowledge. It's not Farai's understanding. It's beyond Farai. It's, uh, hi, Kudzai. Hi, Kudzai. Thank you for joining us. Hi, Joy. Hi. Thank you guys for joining us. So excited to have you. Uh, this year, Hamba's also online. Thank you guys. Thank you guys. 
Uh, today is going to be such a blessing to you. Thank you for joining us. Um, you know, whilst we're waiting for a couple of people to join us for just the next five minutes, we're just talking briefly from the Book Kingdom Prophets, um, just using this time to, you know, uh, advertise the book. <laughs> you should get your copy. It's such a blessing. One of the things that uh, that, pa that pastor was talking to yesterday told me was that he said, you know what, in such a generation as this, this book is important because you're living in a, a generation that thinks, you know, the prophetic is this mystery, this big, huge mystery that is that you can't solve and that you can't understand. That is not supposed to make sense, but that is just, you know, you're just supposed to accept, even though it doesn't make sense to you. But in this book, I simplify those things. In this book, I explain in detail, okay, that this is how a person, a person prophesies. This is how the prophetic dimension works. This is how the prophetic office works. These are the types of prophets that are there. And, and these, are, these are the things that will happen regarding the prophetic. And so I encourage you to, to buy your copy of the book, uh, you know, before we get into today's word. That's the message for today. Uh, like I said, the title of today's message is The Audacity of Faith. The Audacity of Faith. You know, be big. Anticipate you know, a faith boost, you know, anticipate that because that's what we're going to be sharing. We're going to be partaking of the word of God and it's going to be such a blessing to us and to those that are hopeless, it's going to give you hope. It's designed to give you hope, to give you understanding, to give you this grace to be able to say, you know what, in the middle of whatever it is that is happening, I'm going to do something with my life. I'm going to do something. I'm going to move forward in spite of whatever it is. Maybe it's corona that's affecting, maybe it's corona virus that's affecting your life, affecting your job, affecting your business. There is life after. That's one of the things that we're going to be sharing today. Uh, okay, so we're going to be starting in the next two minutes. I'm just going to tell Pastor Rue. Have you managed to share the... I have to ask Pastor Rue. Have you managed to share it in the group? Yeah. Okay, wonderful. All right. So, okay. We may start. I think we've waited a bit of... We've taken a bit of time waiting for others to join us. We might as well start. Amen. Amen. Though that's it all faith. So, as is our tradition, we're going to read, go through three chapters, three uh, Bible scriptures. And then we're going to deliver the word in threes, like a three-course meal. Amen. Start, uh, main, main course, and then dessert, you know. Um, the first reading is going to come from Romans 4, verse 18. Romans 4, verse 18. I have my Bible here with me. Uh, if you have a physical copy, you can take your time to go there. Romans 4, 18. Romans 4, 18. Pastor Ru is going to be, is, is, is the congregation that I'm using today. You're, you're, the, you're the church today. You're the congregant today. <laughs> Are you there? <laughs> yes, I'm there. You're there. All right. If you have an electronic copy, we'll wait for you. I don't know if you can share in the group just the verse. Uh, Romans 4, verse 18. Uh, first, first scripture reading. If you're there, just write amen. Just write amen. I'm supposed to just type amen so that I know everyone is there. Romans 4, verse 18. I hope you all can hear me. It's talking about Abraham. Uh, it's talking about Abraham. And the scripture reads, Who against hope believed in hope, that he might become the father of many nations, according to that which was spoken, so shall thy seed be. Wow. Who against hope believed? Who against hope believed? That's, that's the part that caught my eye. Who against hope? Hope believed in hope. Wow. Our second reading comes from uh, 1 Corinthians 13, verse 18. 1 Corinthians 13, verse 18. Are you there, Pastor Ru? Pastor Ru? First Corinthians 13, verse 13. You can type that in the group. Uh, thank you, Sister Joy. She, she also just posted Romans 4, verse 18. Uh, First Corinthians, 1 Corinthians 13, verse 18. First Corinthians 13, verse 18. My towel. Uh, if, are you there? It says in my version, Meanwhile, these three remain, faith, hope, and love. And the greatest of these is love. Faith, thank you. Thank you very much, Sister Joy, for sharing uh, the word there. In hope, he believed against hope that he should become the father of many nations. As he had been told, so shall your offspring be. 
which she said she posted there from the ESV. I don't know if you can also post from the ESV, 1 Corinthians 13, verse 18. And then you can all just read. You can all just read via, you know, the Facebook post. Yes, 1 Corinthians 13, verse 18. I don't know if you can copy and paste it there. 1 Corinthians 13. 1 Corinthians 13, verse 18. I don't know if you can copy it. Meanwhile, these three remain faith, hope, and love. And the greatest of these is love. That's what it says. Faith. These three remain. Faith, hope, and love. And the greatest of these is love. So whilst we're waiting for, for, for that uh, scripture to be put there online, our third reading comes from our last reading, which is our main reading for today's uh, service, is Mark 4, verse 35. Mark 4, verse 35. Mark 4, verse 35 through to 41. Mark 4, verse 35 through to 41. And, and this is the... Hello, Auntie Muriel. Thank you for joining us. <laughs> okay. Uh, so our third... You're just joining us as we're reading the main scripture. Um, Mark 4, verse 35 through to 41. So excited to be sharing the word of God to, with you this Sunday whilst we're in lockdown. Ordinarily, we would have been at church. You know, I would have been in front of the pulpit with the, with, with the, with the guys there in, in the pews. But by the grace of God, still, you know, we're able to share it via these, <laughs> these means, through these devices and so forth. Thank you for taking your time. Out. You know, we really appreciate you taking your time. This service is going to be such a blessing to you. We're so excited about sharing the word of God. So our main reading is Mark 4, verse 35 to 41. If you are there, just say amen. Just put a amen. I'm there. I'm there, Apostle. I'm there. I'm there. I'm there. I'm there. And let's read. Pastor Ru has shared the link uh, in, our, in our church group and also in our Facebook page. Uh, feel free to also just invite friends, family, and your loved ones so that they can also, you know, be blessed by the word. All right. So I'm, I'm going to read from my version. Uh, it says, On the evening of the same day, Jesus said to his disciples, Let us go across to the other side of the lake. So they left the crowd. The disciples got into the boat in which Jesus was already sitting, and they took him with them. Other boats were there too. Suddenly, a strong wind blew up, and the waves began to spill over into the boat. Wow. That it was about to fill with water. So Jesus says to these guys, let's go to the other side. He's just finished preaching. And as they launch into the sea to cross over to the other side, a storm stirs up. And the scripture is telling us that water began to get into the boat as if it was about to fill up so that maybe they were going to drown. Then verse 37 says, Suddenly a strong wind blew up and the waves began to spill over into the boat so that it was about to fill with water. Jesus was in the back of the boat sleeping with his head on a pillow. Hey, there's a storm going on and Jesus was sleeping. The disciples woke him up and said, Teacher, teacher, don't you care that we're about to die? Don't you care that we are about to die? Other version says, don't not, Do you not care that we're about to perish? Other version says, Do you not care that we're about to be destroyed? Verse 39 then reads, Jesus stood up and commanded the wind, Be quiet. And then he said to the waves, Be still. So he rebuked the wind and then he spoke to the waves. The wind died down and there was a great calm. Then Jesus said to his disciples, Why are you frightened? Have you still no faith? But they were terribly afraid and said to one another, Who is this man? Even the wind and the waves obey him. Oh my gosh, I'm so excited to read the word. If, if I don't even preach, I think the, the scriptures right there, the scriptures were enough. You know, to those who've just joined us, uh, we read from three, three scriptures. We read from uh, Romans 4, verse 18, uh, the scripture that reads that Abraham hoped against hope. Uh, our second reading was 1 Corinthians 13, verse 18, that talks about, that says, faith, hope, and love abided above all, but above all, the greatest is love. But faith, hope, and love. And then the third scripture we read is right here in uh, Mark 4, verse 35 through to 41, about the storm. Jesus is, is, is with the disciples. He says to the disciples, let's go over to the other side. And as they are crossing over to the other side, a storm comes up. And then they wake Jesus up and they say, Jesus is sleeping in the boat. They wake him up and say, Jesus, Master, are you not 
Do you not care that we're about to die? And then Jesus calms the storm. And then he says to them, where is your faith? Where is your faith? And then uh, the disciples begin to talk among themselves. And then they say, who is this man? Those are the three scriptures that we read to those who just joined us. Uh, just to round up again, Romans 4 verse 18, 1 Corinthians 13 verse 13, and then Mark 4 verse 35. And the title today of today's message is The Audacity of Faith. The Audacity of Faith. Let's just pray before we get into the Word, okay? Let's just pray. Father, we thank you for this time that we've set apart to partake of ministry. We, we, we thank you that it is not by, by chance that we are here, but it is by divine appointment. Each and every one who's here online and each and every one who's going to, to watch this broadcast, it's not going to be by chance. It's going to be by grace. It's going to be by divine appointment. So as we begin to get into the preaching of the word, I pray as the preacher, as the minister, that may you take over control of my tongue and my mouth and my speech and my heart and my thinking, that I will begin to speak from the Spirit. I will not speak from my own thinking and may I not speak from my own wisdom. May Farai be quiet. But may the man of God begin to speak. May Farad be quiet, but may the Holy Spirit begin to minister. Because what we want right now is an encounter with you. It's an encounter with the heavens. It's an encounter with the Holy Spirit. It's not an encounter with man. We have not gathered on this group. We have not gathered online, live streaming, to, 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 to share a word as family, as friends, or as, as a church members, or as a congregation. But we have gathered to have an encounter with heaven. So we even pray for the listeners and every person who's going to partake of this word. That is, they listen where they are. We pray that may they not listen with the ear of the flesh, but may the ear be bound, of the ear of flesh be bound. But may they begin to listen with the ear of the spirit. May spirit minister unto spirit and may we have spiritual results in the name of Jesus. We pray that may it be so. We pray that as the word is being ministered, may blind eyes see, may deaf ears hear, may the lame walk, may the supernatural occur, may those that are in chains be, be released and be, made set, be set free. May situations be addressed, may prayers be answered, may miracles occur, and as the service is going on, may people receive their testimonies. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you, everyone, for joining us. I'm so excited to be sharing with you the word of God. It's such an exciting day. My favorite day of the day is Sunday. You know, Pastor Rook can testify. Amen. 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 I wake up and I get dressed up. Uh, we don't know what you're dressed in. Amen. You might be sitting there, you know, in your jammies, you know, but I had to wake up and get in the morning and, and get dressed up and prepare for this word. I'm so excited to share with you the audacity of faith today. You know, before I start getting into the words, those who may not be familiar with our ministry, who may not be familiar with our approach, uh, I just want to share with, with you some of the basics of how we, we, we interpret the Bible, some of the keys that the Holy Spirit revealed to us about how, you know, to interpret the Bible and how to, to get the most, to make the most out of your scriptures. I got, I got my hard copy of the Bible here. I'm, I'm, a, I'm old school. I got my good news version right here, you know. But uh, as, 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 we, as you study the Bible, you know, the things that I just want to share with you that I use, tools that the Holy Spirit revealed to me, you know, that have helped me to have deep understanding of the scriptures. And the first tool that I want to share with you is that, number one, there are many truths. There are many truths. I don't know, Pastor, if you could also post that in Sister Joy, you know, you guys could post that. There are many truths. You know, these are just, you know, Bible interpretation tools or Bible study tools that I, I would encourage you to also apply when you're reading the Bible. You know, there are many truths. Whenever you're reading a story in the Bible, like the one we've just read, you know, we read about the storm. There's a, there's a, there's, there are many truths in that. You can look at it from Jesus' view. You can look at it from the disciples' view. You can look at it from the crowd's view. You can even look at it from the boat's view. And you can even look at it from the storm's view. Jesus, when he's speaking to the disciples in the book of John, he says that, and the Spirit shall lead you into all truth. Into all truth. He uses the word all. In other words, the truth is manifold. He uses a plural word, which is all, when you read, when you read in the book of John. He will lead you into all the truth, into all the truth, all the truth, all the truth. There are many truths. There are many truths. And the first thing I want, want you to understand is that whenever we're reading the scriptures, whenever I'm reading the scriptures, you know, I have opened up myself to that understanding that it's, it's not one truth. There are many. It's many for there are many perspectives of the truth. There are many versions of the truth. And if you do counseling, as I do myself with Pastor Rue, you know, we've been doing a lot of couples counseling. And one of the things that we've been, we've been you know, sharing amongst ourselves is that, you know, whenever you're doing couples counseling, you know, when you talk to the husband, his husband is his version of the truth. And when you talk to the wife, the wife has her version of the truth. And if there are kids there, the kids will have their own version of the truth. 
So it doesn't mean that this person might be lying or that person is lying, even though the truth might be different. What it say, what it just means is that all those are perspective, perspectives of the truth. Perspectives of the truth. So the first thing that I want to share with you that is not that many truths. And even right now, you know, I'm sharing this word with you amidst the you know, coronavirus crisis. It's a crisis that the whole world is dealing with. And there are many truths, there are many news reports that you might be hearing. And there can be an element of truth in all of them. And you might be sitting there at home and you might be saying, you know what, but who's telling the truth and who's telling the truth and who's lying? But sometimes you need to have that mind that is, you know, uh, that is the capacity to understand that, you know what, there can be many truths. There can be many truths. And, but, but other than just many truths, it's also important stage two, the second key that I use in, in interpreting the scriptures, when I'm analyzing the, script, analyzing the scriptures that we share with, that we apply in our, in our church, Kingdom Nation Ministries, is that number two, there are levels of the truth. There are levels of the truth. There are levels of the truth. So first, there are many truths. Now, stage two, there are levels of the truth. And when we're talking about levels of the truth, what we're saying is that all truth is not the same. There is certain truth that is more than the other. You know, if I can use an example like this, you know, I don't know the curriculum you used when, when you're learning, but uh, in Zimbabwe, I'm a Zimbabwean, and in Zimbabwe, you know, uh, when, you, when you're going to school in your primary, in your primary education, you know, when you're doing mathematics, they, they, the teacher may ask you, zero, what is zero minus one? And the, and the answer should be, you know, zero because it can't. So, you know, at primary school, zero minus one, it can't. And it's true, it can't. But the moment you go to high school, you know, zero minus one is equal to minus one. All of a sudden, it can. So at, 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 at secondary school, now you're introduced to a higher truth. I like how the Apostle Paul puts this. The Apostle Paul says that, he says, he says in the scripture, he says, when I was a boy, I thought as a boy. But now I'm a man and now I speak, I think and I process, I reason. And now I speak as a man. So the truth he understood as a boy was different from the truth he understood as a man. So whilst we may be saying at stage one, you know, at the first key of, you know, of studying the Bible, that there are many truths, it's important then we also understand that whilst there are many truths and in all of the many versions and perspectives of the truths, there is an element of truth. The reality is also that, you know what, there are levels of the truth. And so even right now, as you might be listening to this broadcast, before this broadcast, maybe you were watching the news and, and everyone was saying what they thought is true. This one is saying this is what's happening in the world and this one is broadcast, this one is forecasting, you know, this is what's going to happen this year, this is what's going to happen next year. It, there might be an element of truth in what they're saying. But what we've come to understand that as men and women of God, as brothers and sisters of the faith, the, the highest truth is the word of God. The highest truth is the word of God. So what the newspapers might be saying might be true, but the highest truth that we choose to believe is the word of God. Amen. I, I, if I don't even finish the rest of the message right there, I think I've preached. There are levels of truth, but the truth that we subscribe to is the highest truth. That's why Jesus says in the book of John, he says that, and you shall follow me and you shall come to know the truth and the truth shall set you because there's a special kind of truth that sets you free. And the reason why Jesus says the truth shall set you free is because not all truth can set you. Not all truth can set you free. And it's the truth. It can be a truth. But it does not have the power to set you free. It takes a certain level of truth to set you free. So right now we might be listening to a lot of broadcasts, news reports, and, 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 and certain specialists coming through and they're saying, and what they're saying might be truthful, but the level of truth that they may be expressing might not have the power to set us free. But it's only the truth that we get from these scriptures. It's only the truth that we get from the word of God. It's only the truth that we get from the spirit of God that is the power to do certain things. Why? Because it's a higher level of truth. So whenever we know we're, such, we're facing such a crisis, you know, some, some, some of us are busy saying, so people will begin to ask the question, you know what, maybe who's lying? This person is lying. It's not a question about who is lying. It's a question of what level of truth are they saying? Hey. It's a question of what level of truth are they saying? Is that level of truth above the word of God? Is that level of truth the highest level of truth? Yes, it's true, but there is a higher truth. And we subscribe to a higher truth and that higher truth overrides that truth. Hey, 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 hey. These are times that, you know, you get excited and you wish you're standing in church there and you're jumping up and down. Hey, man. I don't know if you can jump up of your seat right now in your chair. Hey, but, hey, man. Hey, man. So we subscribe. We've been called to subscribe to a higher truth because there are many truths. And, but now there are levels of truth. 
And the truth we subscribe to as children of God is the truth we subscribe to in the kingdom of God is the highest level of truth. It's the highest level of truth. So in regarding your situation, regarding whatever is happening in your life personally and individually, be careful of the truth that you choose to believe. Because not all truth has the power to have the positive effect that you might be looking for. Not all truth has the power to set you free. Not all truth has the power to deliver you. Not all truth has the power to, 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 set, to deliver you from the situation and the chains and the struggles and the challenges. Not all truth can shift you into your destiny. But it can be a truth. But it can be a truth. So I'm not here to say, you know what, what the news is saying is, is incorrect about, about the corona, what they're saying. I am here to say there is an element of truth in what the news reporters are saying. There may be an element of truth in what, you know, what, what the so-called specialists are saying. There's an element of truth in what the experts are saying. But I'm here to talk about the highest level of truth that we get from the scriptures, that we get from the throne of God. And that truth is saying that, you know what, there is life after this. There is life after this. The title of today's message to those who just joined us is the audacity of faith. The audacity of faith. And it might not make sense unless you have the basics of what I've just shared with you. That number one, there are many truths. And number two, even though there are many truths, there are levels of truth. There are levels of truth. You know, and, and, and the third key that I want to share with you that we, have, that we apply, that I use in studying the word, that we share in our ministry, is, is models and case studies models and case studies brothers and sisters when you're reading the scriptures don't read this book like a historical book don't read this book like an old like a like a book like like a storybook stories of other people you know the bible was written over a period of approximately 1500 years written by it is it's comp composed of 66 books written by about 40 authors of about 1,500 years approximately it took to write this book. And, and, and you know, when I was studying the Bible, you know, we, we, we taught this at church. And we're saying, why would it take God 1,500 years to write this book? 1,500 years to write this book. And today we, I want to share with you one of the secrets why it took so long to write the scriptures. And why the scriptures needed, number one, it needed, why the Bible needed different books, sections. And number two, why it needed different authors. One of the things that I realized, that what the Holy Spirit revealed to me is that the Bible was designed not to just be a, not to be a historical book, which, is, which it is, it is a historical book, but it was also designed to be a book of case studies and models. As a book of case studies and models, the Bible is like a scientific book. To me, when I read the Bible, I look at it as a, as a book where experiments were held and, and people went through certain situations and then they applied certain solutions and certain keys and certain instructions and then they had certain results. So as a case study, when you look at the Bible, the scripture, as a case study, the thing that I want you to learn is that God took 1,500 years because he was calculating every scenario that we can encounter as, as people, every situation that we can encounter as couples, every, encounter, every situation we can encounter as individuals, as nations, as, as continents, every situation has, is in the Bible. So your name might not be in the Bible in black and white, but believe you me, there is a person in the Bible that if you read, if you take your time to read the scriptures, when you're reading it, there are certain characters that can just jump out. Then you can say, Do you know what? I resonate with this person. Hey. I resonate with Joseph because I'm a dreamer. I resonate with Esther because I feel like I'm destined to be a queen even though I was... Hey, yeah, yeah. I resonate with Peter because I've had my doubting situations. I resonate with Thomas. I, I, I resonate... You know, and, and, and if, you, if you are joining us, maybe you should, you should join, you know, our women's group. We have men's group, a women's group in our church. And Pastor Rue, you know, who's, who's the pastor of our ladies, you know, she was sharing with me that, the, that a couple of weeks ago, is it last month, they, they, they were studying Bible characters that they resonate with. And, 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 and I think, you know, we were discussing with her the, the person that she resonates with. Because brothers and sisters, the, the, in the Bible, there is a character that resonates with you. So when I'm reading the scriptures, I'm reading to look for someone who's resonating with me in regarding my current status, regarding my current situations. And what I've come to learn is when I apply the certain keys and the certain situations and the certain instructions, the certain things that they did regarding their situation, I can begin to also begin to have the same results. Because the Bible is a scientific book. It's a scientific, there's a science to this book. And if you replicate how they did what they did, we are guaranteed to have the same we are guaranteed to have the same results. And that's how we approach the Bible. 
We approach the Bible from, from a case study point of view. We approach the Bible from a book of models, 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 role models and examples and, and templates. So I don't know your situation, but when you begin to read the, the Bible after this service and after this session today, begin to look for someone, begin to look for a character that is resonating with you regarding what you're going through, regarding your marriage, regarding your kids and regarding your situation, and regarding your nation. Begin to look for a character and you will begin to see that if you are apply what they did, you will get the results that they got. So God took 1,500 years to write these scriptures, to inspire the writing of the scriptures because he was calculating, calculating every possible opposite, possible situation, every possible circumstance and every possible everything. He calculated all the possibilities and then he said, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Let me try. How, how can I put this situation in the book and how can I put that situation in the book and how can I put that circumstance in it? So every situation that we deal in, every circumstance that we go through, it's right there in the scriptures somewhere, 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 somewhere. So if you, if you don't, I would encourage you to apply that principle. To apply that principle. That look for the characters that you resonate with. Look for them. Because there is someone who resonates with what you're going through. There is a character that, is, that went through what you're going through. And that is what makes the Bible different from any other book. That is what makes it different. And that is why, you know, when, when the Apostle Paul says that this, the, the, the scriptures were inspired. That is what he's trying to say. That is, there are certain books... If you're a Catholic, you know, you know, you know, you know there's the Apocrypha. There are other books, there are other books that were written that were not able to fit in the book. That does not necessarily mean that those books were not inspired of the Lord. It just means that according to the purpose that God had to say that, you know what, they're going to be, and in 2020, there's going to be about approximately 7 billion people, and I need a book that is going to be able to resonate with about 7 billion people. Hey, yeah, 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 yeah. So, so you, somebody else might have had a book that was powerful, but it may not have been able to resonate in a certain time. So the, I don't know if you're there with me and you understand what I'm saying right now. And last week, then, you know, without wasting, this is just the introduction, but this, this is not the word. Don't get too excited. Hey, man, let's just calm down. <laughs> you know, this is just the introduction. So, so, so the scriptures is a book of case studies and models. So whenever I'm, I'm, I'm preaching, when I'm preparing the Sunday service, to you, Sunday service ends after the broadcast ends. But to me, as soon as the broadcast ends, I'm, begin, I'm busy. I start praying for the next service. So yeah, last week, this time at, at 9.30, after we closed off, I began to pray for the next service. And my prayer was, Lord, what is now the case study regarding where we are? What is the case study? What is the case study? Last week, we shared that the case study that applied to us, you know, what, 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 was, what applied to the world at large, was that, was that it was in two kings, in the book of Kings, when, when Samaria was, being, was under siege from the Syrians. And we said that's the case study that applies in this particular situation. And then we began to describe that being under siege refers to three things. Number one, being surrounded. And we began to explain how the world is surrounded by an invisible enemy of the coronavirus. And number two, how when you're under siege, the intention of the enemy is to cut your supplies. And then we began to talk about how supplies, shopping and grocery supplies are now being limited and restricted if you go to certain shops they will tell you that you can only buy three of this and you can only buy two of these you can only buy one of these and when you go to certain shops they're even empty <laughs> i don't mean to say that in a bad way but 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 that's what's happening what, what happens in the situation of being under siege and then we began to explain that the third thing that happens when you're under siege is that the enemy wants you to surrender and then we began to to preach about how you know our response is that we should move in faith forward in faith we should not succumb to pressure and not succumb to fear and not succumb and not give in to to the level of truth that we are being told around us but we should begin to subscribe to a higher truth amen and those were some of the things we shared last week that you know what we are a people under siege and last week what we we're doing is that we we're looking at what's happening in our world regarding in the context of the coronavirus crisis well, we're looking at it from a bird's eye view. From a bird's eye view. We're looking at it from out in. But as I was meditating on today's message, the Holy Spirit began to say to me, this time I don't want you to look at the situation from out in. I want you to look from at the situation from within. So today we're going to be doing a little bit of introspection. What is happening amongst inside of each and every one of us and amongst ourselves? 
And as I was praying and I was praying and I was saying, God, so what is the case study that applies? Then the Holy Spirit began to talk to me about the storm and the boat. The disciples stuck in the storm in the boat with Lord Jesus. And I was praying last night with Pastor Ru, and I was saying to God, but, but why the storm? But why the storm? And then the Lord began to say to me that, that you know what? You, the, the world is like the disciples in the boat, and the corona is like the storm. And I said, wow. And then he said, there are certain things that happened in that story that apply and that are relevant to what's happening to you guys right now. And those are the things that I want to share with you today in the title, The Audacity of Faith. The audacity of faith. The audacity of faith. And that is the scripture in Mark 4 that we just read when the disciples are in the storm. And if I could break down the story of the storm into three parts. Three is my favorite number. I'm sure by now you got it. Three is my number. <laughs> so I try to do presentations in threes and three verses and in threes. Three is my number. So if I could break down the story of the storm in threes, here's what I'll say. Part one, stage one. Jesus says to the disciples, let's go to the other side. Jesus is the one who says to the disciples, let's go to the other side. And I was meditating on 2020. 2020 has been one of those years that everyone was excited about. Everyone was excited about 2020. Even people who don't believe in God were excited about 2020. I've seen posts and comments and, and resolutions from unbelievers that were saying 20 plenty. So everyone was saying, you know what, this 2020, I am going to the other side. I am going to the other side. This has been the year that most, almost everyone was saying, you know what, I am going to the other side of something. Maybe your other side was getting a job and maybe your other side was starting a business and maybe your other side was a wedding and maybe, I don't know what your other side was, but this is the year that everyone was saying, you know what, I am crossing over to the other side. And the whole talk of 2019 was, oh my gosh, I can't wait for 2020. Oh my gosh, in 2020, I'm going to do this. And oh my gosh, in 2020, I'm going to do that. And oh my gosh, in 2020, the Lord is saying this. And oh my gosh, in 2020, I feel this in the spirit. Oh my gosh, 2020. And some people were even calling it 20 plenty. 2020. So in 2020, everyone was excited about crossing over to the other side. Just like how the story starts. It starts off with Jesus saying to the disciples, let's cross over to the other side. I don't know what your other side is. I don't know what your other side was. I don't know what your New Year's resolution was. But in the middle of the crossing over to the other side, we have found ourselves, brothers and sisters, in the middle of a storm. And one of the most painful things is that, you know, Peter was not the one who said, let's go to the other side. And, and, and you know, Thomas was not the one who said that. Judas was not the one who said it. It was Jesus who said, let's go. Let's go to the other side. So there are some of you who are watching me right now. You, you had a plan and you had a mission. You had an agenda for 2020. And some of you, it wasn't even your plan. It was an inspired plan. It was a, it was a, a God-inspired plan, a divine plan. It was an inspired by the Holy Spirit plan. But now in the middle of the plan, you know, a storm called coronavirus says. And now we are all in the boat like the disciples. And we're saying, but we thought. But, we thought, but we, we thought that because we have God with us, this should not happen. But, but we thought that just be, because we have Jesus in the boat, we are safe. Just because we have Jesus in the boat, just because King Jesus said we are going to the other side, we are not supposed to experience certain challenges. We are not, we are not supposed to experience certain issues. We are not exp because God said it. Because I was dead cross overnight. <laughs> Someone may be saying to yourself right now, I was there at cross overnight. I was there. I was in an all night. I don't deserve to be going through. I don't deserve to be going through this because you know what? I was there. I was there the all night and the pastor was prophesying over 2020 and we had all sorts of declarations and I bought the poster and the poster is in my wall. I bought the calendar and the calendar is in my wall. I bought the wristband. I got the wristband on right now and I got the flyers. I got, I got everything that is talking about what 2020, how it's going to pan out and how it's going to do. And the man of God spoke. But it's right now when the storm and it's not looking like we're crossing over to the other side. So the second part of, of the story to me is, is when the storm begins to happen. Because we've gone over the stage in which you know, we all had our New Year's resolutions. And you know, I was talking, you know, we, we, we have serious talks in our house. It's a very serious house. And I was sitting with Pastor Rina, I was saying that, you know, one of the things, if you're in South Africa, you, 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 it'll make sense to you. In South Africa, one of the things that the coronavirus crisis has done is that it, it came at the end of March and it's leaping into the, the better half of April. So it's not just stealing a month from us. It's, it's technically stealing two months from us. Hey. 
So in January, I didn't, we, had, we all had New Year's resolutions and we had an inspired word and we had a mission. This is in January. And then in February, we are beginning to, to, to set up and to begin to, to start the agenda, to begin to push that, you know what, now I'm going to start doing this, now I'm going to do this. Now in the middle of March, storm begins. And this storm is not, if, if, if this whole crisis had started from 1 April to 21 April, we're going to say, do you know what? It has only robbed us of one month. But this thing, this crisis is stolen is about to steal two months. It's stealing March and it's stealing April. Now from, from a 12 month calendar, two months have been subjected. Two months have already been stolen. Two months. And after these two months, that means that May, we're going to be rebooting and we're now going to be needing to rethink and to restart and to relaunch and to refocus and, and to, you know, we had made so much momentum and so much headway. Now we've lost momentum. Now we need to start building up momentum again. It's just the storm. It's the section of 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 the storm, brothers and sisters, and we're all in the storm. But just because we're all in the storm does not mean Jesus did not say, let's cross over. Just because we, it's, 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 we're in the first quarter of the year and things are not going to, according to plan does not mean God is not the one who inspired your vision, who inspired the mission, who inspired the resolution, who inspired the 20, 20, 20, plenty, 20, whatever you may want to call it, 20 double portion. It doesn't mean that because Jesus was the one who said to the disciples, let's cross over to the other boat. And the same Jesus is the one who is sleeping in the boat. Part three, Jesus sleeping in the boat. So now the storm is happening. The disciples are scooping water out. The scripture says the water is going in the boat. The disciples are scooping the water out. And then it hits them. But, but where is King Jesus? Where is our Lord? And then someone says, hey, he's sleeping. My, my version says he was sleeping on a leather cushion. He was sleeping on the leather cushion. He was sleeping at the back of the boat in the middle of the storm. And then, and then they go to him and then they say, teacher, teacher, master, master, Lord, Lord. Do you not care that we are about to die? And that, that is the conversation that has led to this message. That conversation. Do you not care that we are about to die? Because that is what's happening with some people right now. Some people are saying to themselves, Do you not care that we are about to die? So as I begin to meditate further on this scripture, on the conversation that happened, that transpired between Jesus. Because imagine you are Jesus and you are sleeping and then the disciples come to you and then they wake you up. And then they say, the first thing they say is, teacher, do you not care that we are about to die? And then, and then the Holy Spirit began to share with me the three things about the audacity of faith that I want to share with you today. He began to share with me that there they, they interpreted Jesus sleeping in the boat is being uncaring. Their interpretation of Jesus sleeping was that he was uncaring. But when Jesus woke up and then he addressed the situation, his interpretation was, where is your faith? Think about that. The disciples were saying, do you not care? Jesus was saying, Jesus then said to them, where is your faith? Then last night as I was praying for the service, the Lord began to say to me, there are three interpretations of faith because what happened there was that the faith of Jesus was misinterpreted, misinterpreted by the disciples as being uncaring. He had faith and he was sleeping in faith. And then the disciples thought he didn't care. And then something just went on in my spirit last night as I was praying for you and I was praying for this service. That sometimes when you have faith, you can be misunderstood and your faith can be misinterpreted. When you have faith, your faith can be misunderstood and your faith can be misinterpreted. Because what the disciples wanted is, they wanted Jesus to be scooping the water out with them. Scooping the water out. And because he was not doing what they were doing, they assumed that he doesn't care. Just like right now, someone is saying, God, do you not care? God, do you not care that we're about to perish? Someone right now is saying, where are the men of God? <laughs> I heard this post 
my wife came to me and we had a serious talk. And then, and then she was saying to me, and she said, she said, people are asking right now that where are the men of God? Where are the men of God? Where are the so-called apostles and where are the so-called prophets and where are the so-called but Where are they in the middle of the crisis? And, and then I began to say to my wife, the pastor, and then I began to say, they might be sleeping, but it doesn't mean. Because the problem with what's happening right now with the coronavirus is that the world is busy reacting in certain ways. And because us, as men of God, we are not... And because we are not reacting the way they want us or they expect us to react, it's sometimes seen as if we don't. I think I've just shared something to someone right there. Right? And I heard a certain news, someone saying, you know, where is the church? Why? Be, be, because we are not doing what the world is doing and we are not reacting the way the world is reacting does not mean we don't... It doesn't mean we don't care, brothers and sisters. Just because us as men of God, we're not posting every day, we're not sharing every day. Maybe we're not posting as much as CNN, you know, we're not posting as much as all these broadcasters as news. Maybe we're not 24-7 talking about COVID-19, COVID but it doesn't mean, it's like Jesus sleeping in the boat in the middle of the storm, and the world is coming and he's saying, where are these so-called men of God, and where is this so-called church, and, and if you're a believer, those unbelievers are coming to you, and they're saying, where is your, where is your God, <laughs> and I'm here to say to you that Jesus is sleeping in the boat, but that doesn't mean he does it. It doesn't mean it's not the Jesus, same Jesus who said, let's cross over to the other side. It doesn't mean he doesn't care. It doesn't mean. And so there are certain misinterpretations of faith because when you have faith, you need to be prepared to be misunderstood. And when you have faith, you need to be prepared that people are going to misinterpret your faith. Hey, 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 hey. hey I feel like somebody has just, has just understood what I'm trying to say today. Because that's what happens with faith. So there are three misinterpretations of faith that I want to share with you today. There are three misinterpretations of faith that I want to share with you today. There are three mis misinterpretations of faith that I want to share with you today from this service that we're sharing the audacity of faith. Number one, the first misinterpretation of faith is that when you have faith, people can think you are ignorant. Oh, Sister P, you should be one of those to say amen right now. When you have faith, people will say to you, you are ignorant. People will confuse faith with ignorance. So the disciples, when they go to Jesus, the first thing they say is this, do you not care? In other words, are you aware that there's a storm going on whilst you're sleeping? Are you aware that we're about to die whilst you're sleeping? Are you aware that you say, let's cross over to the other side, but we're here stuck in this boat and this storm is destroying the boat whilst you are sleeping? So they confused his faith. For ignorance. So right now is where people of God and children of God and men of God, people think that because we have faith, we don't know how fatal of this thing is. Because we don't because we have faith, we don't know the mortality rate. We don't know the fatality rate. We don't know how serious the issue is because we have faith, because they are misinterpreting our faith for ignorance. So they are coming to us with statistics. Do you know that corona has done this? And do you know this many people are dying then? Do you know? Do you know? But they don't understand that hey, yeah, 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 yeah. Anyway, anyway, just because we have faith does not mean you don't we don't understand what is happening just because we have faith does not mean we're unaware of the statistics just because it seems like we are sleeping and we are sleeping in faith does not does not mean we're oblivious of what is happening on the it's faith that we're applying it's a faith uh, yeah, yeah. it's a dimension of faith it's a level of faith so whilst they're asking us as men of god and they're saying men of god where are you we are sleeping in faith uh, yeah, yeah. we're not sleeping because we're ignorant we're not sleeping because we do not know we are not quiet uh, we are sleeping in faith because we have gone to the other side already because we have seen that there is life after this thing because we have seen it so sometimes we're not making the fuss out of it Maybe to us, Corona is a no-show, it's a non-event, because we have crossed over. So it looks like we are sleeping, and to someone who doesn't know the spirituality of things, who's operating at a lower level of faith, who's only operating at a lower level of truth, they say, where are the men of God, and where are the children of God, and where is your God, and where is your church, and where is the church in terms of this, and maybe the church should never meet again, because it seems like the church is sleeping in the middle of the storm. But we have faith. Hey, yeah, yeah. It is the faith that is giving us the ability to sleep. Hey, it's not that we are ignorant. Hey, 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 hey. It's not that we do not know. We know. But we have faith. And our faith is giving us the confidence. Hey, yeah, yeah. hey, 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 hey. Do you understand what we are saying, brothers? And do you understand? When you have faith, people can begin to assume you are ignorant. 
So that's why in the world, when a person says they are a Christian, they automatically assume that you are gullible and you are naive. It doesn't mean we are gullible and we are naive. It doesn't mean that we are shallow. It doesn't mean, it doesn't mean those things. We are aware of the things you know. Hey. But we've gone beyond that knowing. And we've been able to subscribe to a higher truth. That believes in things that you cannot see. That believes in the invisible. That believes that you can call out things that are not as if they were. That believes in the impossible. That believes when things don't make sense. We are. Eh, eh. That's what we subscribe to. Eh, Amen. That is the system we subscribe to. And so if you are coming from a secular world and you are coming from secularism, your first thought and your first perception is that these people are ignorant. But we are not ignorant. Eh, Amen. Jesus sleeping in the boat does not mean he was unaware of the storm. But he was applying faith. He was applying faith. So brothers and sisters, I'm not sure what's, what you're, what's happening in your life. But be prepared that when you begin to apply faith in your situation, people can think you're ignorant. You're ignorant of the, how serious the situation is. You're ignorant of the circumstances. You're ignorant of the, the, the consequences of certain decisions and certain things that are happening. But the moment they think you're ignorant, I want you to remember this message. And I want you to say, it's okay. Because the disciples thought Jesus was also ignorant. <laughs> they thought he was ignorant for sleeping in the boat. But, but now, the second misinterpretation, the second interpretation of faith, interpretation, is that when you have faith now and then you wake up and then you calm the storm, the second thing that the people will say is that, oh my gosh, he's confident. So he was not sleeping because of ignorance, but he was sleeping because he was confident. Hey, hey, hey. So when you hold on to your faith long enough, when you see through the storm, when you go through this crisis, people will, the same people that were calling you ignorant before are the same people that are going to come back to you and they say, do you know what? You are so confident. You are so confident. What is confidence? Having hope, being hopeful, be having this assurance. And that is what some of us have. In the middle of what is happening, there is a certain confidence that we have. And someone can misinterpret it for ignorance or whatever, but we are confident because we know. We know the God we serve. We know. We know the faith we have. We know what our God can do. We know. So we are confident. So at stage one, people can misinterpret your faith for ignorance. But at second stage, they will be able to correctly interpret it for confidence. But afterwards, there's the second, third the conversation, the third conversation that happened at the end, in the very last verse of the, of the reference scripture. The disciples begin to talk amongst themselves. And then they begin to say amongst themselves, who is this? <laughs> and there are two ways of saying who is this. Who is this who commands even the storm and the listen? Who is this who talks to the wind? Who is this who talks to the world? Who is this? And, and the first way is this. What they were referring to is that the third interpretation of faith is that faith is audacious. Faith is audacious. Faith is audacious. And sometimes when you're audacious, you can be misinterpreted for being arrogant. Sometimes when you have faith, people can begin to say, he's either audacious or he's arrogant. Arrogant means you are exaggerated. But audacious means... You take risks. And the title of today's message, brothers and sisters, is The Audacity of Faith. And the faith that we need to apply regarding this situation is the faith to say that, God, I am going to be bold. I am going to be willing to take risks in the middle of all these things. So that's what the scripture that we read in the book of, of Romans tells us. The, the audacious faith that Abraham had. That he hoped against hope. There is a faith in which you will have to have faith against faith. Hey, yeah, yeah. You will have hope against hope when it doesn't even make sense. When all odds and, and all, everything is against you, but we are choosing to believe. And that's the word that the Lord was saying to me today. That share with my, with, my, with my children, share with my brothers, share with your brothers and sisters in the faith. Share with your people, share with the people that it's time to apply audacious faith. Because it's only faith that is the audacity to look at the storm and to say, do you know what? There is going to be life after you. 
Do you know what? I'm not being insensitive to those that have been directly affected, those that have lost their loved ones, and those that are experiencing certain tragedies that are close, that have hit them hard. I'm not being insensitive. I sympathize, I empathize, I relate, I, I feel you, I feel your pain. But, 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 but there's going to be a life after the crisis. There, there, there's going to be a future after this thing. And, and I'm going to begin to live my life as if I've already crossed over to the other side. So, so the conversation I began to have with Jesus, and I encourage you to do the same, is that I began to talk and I said, to, I said Lord Jesus, I said, I said, I said if, you, if they did not wake you up in the boat, what was going to happen? And then in my spirit I heard that storm was going to pass. So that's why when Jesus woke up, he, he, his, he, his, his anger was not really to the storm. His main anger was to his disciples. That, don't you think, hey, yeah, yeah, yeah. what kind of a Lord am I? What kind of a God am I? What kind of a teacher am I? Who would say to his own people, let's cross over to the other side, only to lead them to their destruction? Hey, yeah, 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 yeah. Do you understand what I'm, going to, what I'm saying to you? Even if the disciples did not wake Jesus, Jesus was going to continue sleeping. And that storm was still going to go. So he was sleeping because he knew that this storm is going to pass. And that's the approach I want to say to each and every one of us that is, in, that is going to be sharing this message, that is partaking of this message right now. Begin to live as if the storm has already passed. And people are going to think you are ignorant. People are going to think that you are arrogant. But people are going to begin to understand that, you know what, you have the audacity. You have the audacity. And as you are going to begin to live as if the crisis is over, your life is going to begin to change. You're going to begin to have the results of the life after the crisis. Some of us in this house, we're not even waiting for the crisis to end. Well, it's, it's business as usual. It's business as usual. It's business as usual. We're working from home as usual. We're going on as usual. It's business. It's church on Sunday as usual. Because life must go on. So whatever it is you've been pushing for, whatever it is you've been believing for, in Jesus' name, they have the audacious faith to say, do you know what? Even in the middle of the crisis, I am still moving on. Even in the middle of what's going on, I am not going to be influenced by this. I am not going to allow Corona to steal a month, to steal two months, to steal three weeks, to steal whatever. I am not going to allow it. I am going to, if I'm looking for a job, I am going to continue to apply. If I'm starting a business, I'm going to continue with my business. I am going to continue as is, as if the storm has already passed. Because in reality, in the highest level of truth, it has already passed. Brothers and sisters, I pray. I pray for everyone who's a part of us right now. I pray for you where you are. I pray for my wife. I pray for my kids. I pray for my ministry. I pray for my businesses. I pray for everyone who's a part of us. I pray for you and your families, your children, your businesses, your jobs, everything pertaining to you. I pray for you where you are. That as we begin to apply audacious faith, may we have the results of faith. Even if we're going to be misinterpreted for being, you know, for being arrogant or for being ignorant or be, for being foolish or stupid. Even as if our faith is going to be misinterpreted or misunderstood by the world, we refuse to give in but we choose to be audacious in the middle of the crisis we choose to continue to be audacious in the middle of corona we choose to be audacious in the middle of uncertainties irrespective of what's happening with the economy we subscribe to the kingdom of God our economy is the kingdom of God our government is the kingdom of God our life is the kingdom of God our existence is in the kingdom of God in him we live and we breathe not in the world and not in South Africa not in Zimbabwe not in America not in UK wherever you're watching from we subscribe subscribe to a higher government we subscribe to a higher kingdom and we are not we are not under, yeah, 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 yeah. we are under the government of god we are under the governance of god we are not under the government of man and the results we are going to experience in our lives are the results of the kingdom government are the results of kingdom 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 are the results of the kingdom of god not the wisdom of men and not the knowledge of men and not the news of men and not the strategies of men and in jesus name I pray that may be so with you, may be so with you, that in the middle of this crisis, you're going to begin to subscribe to a higher truth. You're going to begin to subscribe to a higher kingdom. You're going to begin, it's not what, it's not that what the news, news reporters are saying, it's a lie. No, there's an element of truth. Go on with your level of truth. But we subscribe to a higher level of truth. We subscribe to a higher level of truth. A truth that sometimes can sleep in the middle of a storm. Hey. So I almost titled this message, Sleeping in the Storm. Sleeping in the middle of a storm. Because that's what's happening. 
Do you know, I, I, try, I try to be as honest and as genuine as possible. I try to be as honest and genuine as possible. And one of the things that, you know, that touched me during the course of the week was, you know, when I started seeing posts and, and, and right now there's the news reports of a certain individual saying, do you know what, maybe we don't even need church meetings at all. Maybe we don't even need the certain things that are necessary. Maybe going to school is necessary. Maybe going to work is necessary. But do you know what? These church meetings should stop permanently. This is what, what a news report I heard. I don't know whether it's true or not. But this is another person saying their own opinion or their own version of the truth. Because to him, the church is sleeping in the middle of the storm. But I'm saying to, to the world and I'm saying to you as a news reporter of heaven, we subscribe to a higher truth. And just because it seems like to you, we are not scooping out the water like you. We are not responding the way you are responding. Just because we are responding differently. Just because we are responding on our knees. Just because we are responding with our fasts. Just because we are responding in a different way. It does not mean we are ignorant. We are ignorant. It does not mean that. It means that we subscribe to a different truth. And we have a different kind of faith. That is setting us free. That is set us free from the consequences and the realities of this crisis at a lower level. And you are subscribing to a higher truth. And it might not make sense to you, but one day it will make sense to you. It's going to make sense to the world when life goes on after the crisis. And they're going to say, you know what? Maybe these Christians were on to something. Do you know what? Maybe these churches were on to something. Do you know what? Maybe this God was on to something. Do you know what? Maybe these men of God were on to, were on to something. Because we, we are sleeping. It looks like we are sleeping out of fear. But we are sleeping out of faith. We are not reacting the way they want us to react. Because we are reacting through different means. In Jesus' name we pray. So the audacity of faith, one of the things in closing, one of the things that inspired that title was, was the book by uh, Barack Obama. Barack Obama wrote a book, while well, he was still a senator, he wrote a book called The Audacity of Hope. The Audacity of Hope. The Audacity of Hope. Um, I remember my father-in-law had a copy of that book, The Audacity of Hope. That was a book that was written by Barack Obama whilst he was still a senator. He was still a senator and wrote a book called The Audacity of Hope. And he was still a nominee, a presidential candidate nominee. He wasn't even nominated for being a presidential candidate yet. But he later on went on to be the president. And then he later went on to actually be re-elected. So that book that Barack Obama wrote whilst he was still a senator, to some, to some people, it was maybe a word of encouragement to himself. But to me, it was a prophecy. It was a prophecy. He prophesied his destiny. He prophesied his future before it was. That, you know what? I am going to hope to be the first black president against all hope. And some people thought he was ignorant of the statistics. Some people thought he was ignorant of, of going against, I remember it was, a certain president's wife, and, and going against all these, all these, there were, all the odds were against him. But a secular man, brothers and sisters, had the audacity of hope. So us, as people of faith, we need to show more. We need to be more. We need to apply an audacious faith. We need to have, the, you know, the world needs to say the audacity of faith. You know, as I was preparing for this message, I was thinking about my, my own biography. And I was saying, if, if, I, if I'm to write my own biography, or if someone's going to write my own biography, and they ask me the title, they ask me the title, you know, Farai, what, what's the title of, what, what do you want us to title? And I was, as I was praying for this message, I was walking, you know, in the prayer room, and I was saying, I want to title my own biography, Farai. And underneath the subtitle would be, I don't believe in destiny. Then I said, Maybe if I say I don't believe in destiny, it might be too harsh. Then I said, maybe I should call it Farai. And then at the bottom it should say, I, create my, I created my own destiny. Or you create your own destiny. But I'm going to, I, after this message, I begin to say, maybe I should call it Farai. The audacity of faith. I always joke with Pastor Ru and people, some people, and they say, the greatest, the most the greatest tragedy that I don't want you to encounter in your life is this. When you die as a good believer, then you go to heaven. And then you go to Moses. And then you have this conversation with Moses. There are people that I'm going to go to talk to when I go to heaven. 
the, one of the people is Moses. I'm going to say to Moses, Moses, when you went in front of the river, the, the sea, and God said it's going to open up, and he said, do this, it's going to open up. Did you know it was going to open up? I'm going to go to Elisha and I'm going to say, when you performed these miracles, did you know beforehand? And I always say to, to those that are close to me and even to people in our church, I always say, the greatest tragedy is if you go to heaven and then Moses says, do you know what? I was scared. You know, when all those things were happening, I was scared stiff. I didn't know it was going to happen, but do you know what? I just believed. What if all these men of God that we read in this book, they just believed. They just believed. They didn't know. Because the problem is that we've made superheroes out of Bible characters. But the scriptures themselves tell us that Elijah was a man just like you, just like me. And he had like feelings, he had like manner feelings. But he prayed for a drought and it happened. And then he prayed for it to rain and then it rained. The saddest conversation is when you go to heaven and all these Bible characters come to you and then they start saying to you, that, do you know what? When it was happening, I didn't know. Daniel, Dan, Dan will say to you, do you know what? When they threw me inside that, inside that den with lions, I thought I was breakfast. I thought that was it. I was looking for salt. I was looking for pepper. I was looking for, for ketchup and I was just going to sprinkle myself and then just say, hey God, see you soon. But do you know what? I chose to believe. Brothers and sisters, it's a time to believe. And that's the same thing I want to say to you today that you know, if all these things that are happening and all these men of God that you're seeing doing all these things that they're doing, it's faith. It's not predetermination. They are not pre it's not destiny. It's not destiny. It's not meant to be. It's people making decisions. Sister Jackie, you're watching us from Zimbabwe. It's destiny. It's, it's a decision. It's a decision. It's a decision. There are people that make decisions from faith. And then five years later, those decisions will look like it was a prophecy. So if Barack Obama is a senator and nobody can write a book to say the audacity of faith, and then he later on becomes president, without applying the faith we have, without having the tools we have, sorry for going a little bit overboard, but without all those things, but we as children of God, we can't even prophesy over our own situations. We can't even prophesy greatness of all. When we get fired, we throw a fit. We're not even thinking of saying, you know what? Maybe it's time for me to start my own business. Maybe. Maybe you can't get a job because you need to say, do you know what? I am going to start something. Maybe you are the employer that you're looking for. So that's the conversation that I, I, I want to have it with you right now before it happens. That when I go to heaven, I'm going to look for all these characters all of the authors in the Bible. I'm going to say, you know, Apostle Paul, so, you know, when, when this was happening and when you were in prison, what did you know? You know, Apostle, you know, Apostle Peter, you know, when, 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 you, when you passed by, you know, the beautiful gate and, and, then, and then you guys healed the, 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 the lame guy, did you know? And, and in my spirit, I know what they're going to say. In my spirit, I know they're going to say this. They're going to say, Farai, I didn't know. But I had faith. And I'm challenging you to have faith. I'm challenging you to have faith. I'm challenging you today to have audacious faith. It's not about corona. Some of us, this message might be for you. Some of us have lived beyond the corona. To some of us, the corona maybe was not even an event. Not because we are careless. Not because we were ignorant. But because our faith subscribes to a higher truth. And that's what I'm saying to you today. That Don't just take this message to say, you know what, I'm going to use this message to get through the, the corona crisis. But I want you to get this message and to use it to become great. To pray for the sick and to believe that they will be healed. To pray for the lame and to believe they're going to be well. To begin to speak to situations and you will see that things are going to begin to happen. Not because you know that the lame are going to walk or the blind are going to see or the deaf are going to hear. But because you have audacious faith. Not just the confidence faith. The confident faith that hopes. But you have the audacious faith. Audacious faith takes risks. It takes risks. It's risk-taking faith. Hey, yeah, yeah, yeah. That you know what? I don't know what people are going to say, but I'm going to pray for their sake. But you know what? Maybe they might not get well, but I'm still going to do it. I'm going to apply this faith. I like what Pastor Carlos just wrote. There. He wrote, time to believe. 
It's time to believe, Pastor. It's time to believe. It's time to believe. Thank you, everyone, for, for tuning in to this broadcast. I hope it's been a blessing to you. You know, um, you know. sorry for going overboard. We usually stick to our time. If it's 9.30 to 10.30, it's supposed to be 9.30 to 10.30. Now it's 10.45. But before we close, I just want to, to, to reach out to all of you that, you know what, if, if you feel led, as is our, in our culture, at our church, you know, we start off with praise and worship, and then we have offering time, and then we have the word. Today, I feel led to ask for, you know, for an offering. If you feel like, you know what, you want to partner with our ministry, you want to send an offering to our ministry, you know, use our contact details. Uh, you can contact inbox us or email our offices or whatever it is, you know, and, and, and somebody on the other end will respond. Our administrators will respond to you. And then they'll tell you about the various ways you can use to send, to send your offering, to send your tithe or to send whatever, whatever offering that the Lord is putting in you to, to give. We are also going to start, you know, a coronavirus crisis initiative, you know, to help the homeless and to help those that are struggling, to help those that have been really hit hard by it because we are those people we love. Amen. We have love, you know. But that's the word for today. Thank you, everyone, for your time. Thank you. I really appreciate it. I know it's been, it's been such a blessing, but be challenged. Be challenged. Utendo, be challenged. Be challenged there in Josie. Be challenged. There is greatness in you. Last week as we were sharing, you know, the scriptures, you know, as we were sharing, as I was preaching, your, your, your face just, you know, just hit me. And then I, was, and I just said, you know what, God, there's something, there's something about Rutendo. There's something going, happening to Rutendo. Rutendo, we pray for you where you are. There is greatness in you. There is so much greatness in you. May that greatness be released. Sorry to put you on the spot like that. <laughs> but there is greatness in you. There is so much in you. It's time to believe. Believe in the greatness within. And you might, people might think maybe, you know, you, you, you are ignorant. But that ignorance is going to change to confidence and it's going to change to audacity and then you're going to begin to see the results of faith. I pray for everyone who's, who's, who's just been partake, sharing with us the word. Apply audacious faith and as you apply the faith, the audacious faith that Abraham applied, may you have the results of faith. Thank you for tuning in. Be blessed. Enjoy your day further. Bye.